All right, so now you guys should be able to see me in the little corner over here, and then the screen um, is hopefully showing on there. So from now on, I am looking at my screen, so I won't be able to see your comments anymore, but Colin is there, so go ahead and ask along. Now, the products, the only thing I already installed is the Thrive Product Manager, uh, because that's not very important to, to see how to install that. I connected it to the account. So from here, I can install everything. Now, the website that we will be looking at is called the well balanced is called wellbalancedsuccess.com because that's the name of my new podcast well balanced success and as you can see this is still uh, the very basic wordpress install i didn't do anything yet so let's go ahead i will install quiz builder architect drive comments um, drive leads i'm not sure i'll be showing that today and then also uh, the theme builder with Shapeshift. So for that, I can just install Shapeshift. So let's select and um, install these products. Now, for people who are not familiar with the tools yet, so Thrive Theme Builder in, is our theme builder where you can really build any WordPress theme from scratch. And we have the accompany team that's called Shapeshift, which is already pre-designed by our designers to make it super easy for you so that you don't have to start from scratch. So you will me see using Shapeshift. And in just a few seconds, I will already be able to show you how much this changed the website. All right. So now let's reload our website. As you can see, this already changed completely, right? Because now we installed the Shapeshift theme and theme builder, and this um, yeah, made sure that we had this new theme on our website. It activated it immediately. So this is very important. If you install Thrive Themes and Shape Thrive Theme Builder and Shapeshift on a new website, it will automatically activate the theme. Now, if you don't want that because you're still working on it, you can go into your theme, so appearances, themes, and as you can see here, uh, the active theme is Thrive Theme Builder, um, but you can go back to your old theme and won't change anything. But that is also why if you are switching over a website, please always use a staging website uh, to make sure that you do your, your changes on a staging website first, and then you can move over to a live website. Now, here we have the Thrive dashboard, and this is where you can find Thrive Theme Builder, or this is more where you can find the wizard, the site setup wizard for Thrive Theme Builder. Now, this is one thing that I will do first is go into my settings, and in the general settings, I will change the site title and the tagline. So here, the site title is Well Balanced Success Podcast, and then the tagline. Um, weekly cost on how to achieve well to our site setup with it, shall we? So this is where uh, Thrive Theme Builder and Shapeshift are completely different from any theme that you've used before. Um, we try to make it as easy as possible for you to go from a blank WordPress install to having your site set up the way you want it. And as you can see in this site wizard, there are um, a couple of steps that will help you go through the different elements of your website. Now, what I did is I prepared a document with uh, some information. So for example, here I have a light logo and a dark logo that I will be using. Um, I also have the color, so the hex color of uh, the, the blue that I will be using for my website because I already, um, yeah, I already uh, decided on which, what my logo would look like, what the colors would look like, and so on. Uh, because I don't think that's the most important thing to show here, because it will be different for everybody anyway. So I have my brand guides that I can open. And then um, 
the website that's that's already the copy that i wrote for the website so i did do some preparation for the website but i as you can see i did not install anything yet so we'll be starting from scratch right there so let's go into our site wizard and let's get started now the first thing that you want to do is upload your logo so in this case um, i have both of my logos already downloaded i believe so in my downloads, I have the light version and the dark version. And for the moment, I will just upload the dark version. Let's select this and continue. Now, my brand color is this bright, very nice bright blue. And I will click on here and add this code in here. So as you can see, it's a different blue than what it originally was. And I will continue with this. Now, what's really cool, as you can see, is that already my logo is shown here in the header and this call to action, I don't know if you realize, but that is the blue that I just selected. So everything in this wizard will already use my logo, will already use the brand color, which gives me a really good view of what my website will look like. Now, from here, I will go into the menu and see which um, header I like. Now, you can still change anything in this header. So what I suggest at this point is basically choose a header that's closest to what you imagine your header to look like. So look at um, where the logo is, for example. Do you want the logo in the center? Do you want it left, right? Uh, do you want social media buttons in your header? Yes or no? Um, that kind of stuff. because Afterwards, you can still change if our designs already did the work. It's much easier, right? So I will go with this, um, this simple and I will show you how to change it because, for example, I don't really like this border around it. So that is definitely something that I will change. Now, once you are happy, you pick the header that you like, just choose and continue. So for the footer, same idea. Let's just go in and pick a footer that we like. As you can see, you can have a contact form in there. You can have a lead generator, or you can just go with a very simple footer, which is what I will do for now. The next step, and this is a very big one, is your homepage. So Shapeshift comes with pre-designed homepages. And these are not just any homepages. These are homepages that we designed with conversions in mind. So each one of these templates, which I will show you right now, um, is really made for a specific type of business. So you can choose from these ready-made homepages. You can show one of your existing pages. So if you already created a homepage, then you can show one of those, or you can display your blog as the homepage of your website. Now, honestly, 99% of the time, we will not suggest you show your blog list because you want to make sure that your homepage immediately captures the attention, grabs people in, and make sure that they know why they are there, what they will get from your website, and so on. So that is why um, having a really nicely designed landing page uh, is, is a way better way to go with your um, homepage. So here, this is uh, the local business focused one. As you can see, this is very nicely designed. And like I said, everything here is with a local business in mind. Now, there are other designs that are available for you here. And the one that I will be choosing is the personal branding one, because this is a personal branding website. But again, we'll make some tweaks on that homepage to make sure that it looks unique and that it really fits my purpose for this podcast website. So let's go with the personal branding one. I want to get your attention on something because can you see that this is again using the brand color that I selected earlier? If I had picked an orange, this whole page would already be adapted and would already be orange. So that is why choosing that brand color really helps you with setting up your full website super, super quickly. So for now, 
Don't worry about any text, any details, just pick the homepage that you like most and then let's choose and continue. Now for the single blog post. So don't forget, you are creating your theme here. So you want to keep in mind that the template that you're choosing here is the way that each one of your blog posts will be shown by default because you're only selecting the default blog post template here. So we have different um, layouts here. So we have uh, narrow featured images. We have split like this one, like with a split top, with a sidebar, without a sidebar, uh, boxed, not boxed. So the way I would go about this to pick the one that is best for you is just think about your featured image. Just think about like the above the, the, the fold, like how do you want that to look? Do you want your title to be on top of the image or do you want your title to be under the image? Do you want like half of, of the, the heading section to be um, the, the image or not? And then you can find one of the, the designs here that is closest to what you're looking for. Now, one more time, and you will be hearing this a lot in this tutorial, but that's because it's true. You can still change anything to make it look exactly the way you want to, but you don't have to because you can already select something that you really like. So in this case, let's go with our, uh, maybe, nah, with our default one here. So this is like this big featured image with the title on top of it. Let's choose and continue. Now we go to our blog post. So this is your uh, website.com slash blog. And this will be the page where all of your different blog posts are shown. Now, you, you probably know that there are different ways of layouts. So you can have a grid layout, you can have a list layout, or you can have a masonry layout. A masonry layout, if you don't know exactly what that is, think about Pinterest, the way the images are shown in like the Pinterest layout. That's the, the masonry layout. And so here you can see, do you want a grid, a list layout, or if you go down here, the masonry layout. Up to you, completely up to you. Now for my website, because I know that the featured image of the blog post, which is actually going to be the podcast, is going to be the same featured image or very, very similar featured image. It's not very useful to have like a big image and then the text. So that's why I will pick this list layout uh, for my blog post. And then you guessed it, I will make some changes to it. Now you can also see that we have this top section um, that is shown here. But again, this is something that we can adjust completely. And then step eight, our pages. So this will be our standard pages, our um, contact page or uh, our, yeah, our um, about page, uh, the normal pages that we have on our website. And for now, I will probably just go, because um, I have a dark header. Um, I'll go with this blank page. Um, yeah, let's just go with, with this blank version. All right. Now, because I will probably be using a custom menu rather than a WordPress menu, I won't be setting up any menus, but if you have a WordPress menu set up, you can simply select it here and um, yeah, then that will automatically go into your header. But I prefer a custom menu because it's just much more flexible and that means I can do everything on the front end of the website, which is just my preference. So that's why I will continue without choosing a menu. And that's it. This is already our um, website set up. So let me show you what happened now. So from this uh, install, we went to this version where we have our own logo, our colors. We have this really nicely designed homepage that we will be able to adjust. And then when we go to slash blog, we have a blog setup here that we will have to change. Um, but this is already 
this is already um, the, the home page of your website. So if you just want a very simple one page website, you can now start editing this, right? Um, all right, before I stop doing any uh, changes, I will go through the other tabs here or the branding and typography tab, because like I said, I have a dark and, um, I have a dark and, and um, a, a light logo for my website. So I will add the light version here because automatically you can see that it copied the dark and the light version, um, but we'll just, have a light version here. This is uh, good if you um, if you use, for example, a dark footer, and then you want to have uh, your logo in the dark footer. Um, or in like here, in, in my case, I'll probably use the the light logo uh, on the blue uh, on the blue footer there. So here is also where you can set up a favicon. It's not something that I'll be doing right now because um, I didn't prepare it. <laughs> so here, and this is our, um, our typography set. So for this one, I will edit it. And I have in, because um, I already picked another font that I really like. Um, so for that, I can select all the headings. And this is a Google font. Um, and it's the Barlow condensed is the one that I like 300 and then 600 and we will include the italic version. So apply. And then I do not want my headings to be bold. So I unbold it. As you can see, all the headings changed here. If you want to change your text, you would do it in exactly the same way. So you can just select, use the breadcrumbs here to select all text. And then you can see in our case, this is Muli as the, as the font. This is actually the font I want to use. Uh, you can also change the hyperlinks, the quote, uh, the blog quote, and so on. And you can do this for tablet and mobile. So you can immediately check what would these different uh, font sizes look on the different um, on the, on the different uh, screen sizes. So let's save this. All right, I'll go back now. See how we are doing with our questions. So I can see that um, Colin has been answering questions here. Let me see. All right. Um, it's really, really hard to keep up with the question. So I'll keep going and then um, we'll see if at some point we'll have to um, switch over to the other version. Okay, so now that I set up the website, I set up the branding, I set up the typography, um, one thing that I will do is go into our Thrive Themes dashboard into the dashboard right here. And from here, I will go into API connections and I will also go into smart sites. So let's start with the API connection. Now, the reason that I want to add an API connection before doing anything else is because then I will be very easy, very it will be very easy to just connect uh, the lead generation forms and so on. So add a new connection. I use active campaign uh, for this. And I already copied my API key and um, right here. 
If you need any help with that, we have videos on where to find that API key and so on. But now this is it. This is how easy it is to connect your um, to connect an API connection with Thrive Themes. So now this is done for all the different tools, and you will be able to connect all your opt-in forms with this. Now let's go back to our dashboard, and from here go to Smart Site. Now Smart Site and Global Fields is something that will be really, really helpful to keep your website up to date. So in the beginning, you might not really see why you would add links here instead of on your website. But the moment that you want to change your email address or that you want to change your telephone number or anything like that, you will be extremely happy that you used a global field. Now, these are also the global fields that are used in the templates in a Thrive Theme Builder. So if you see somewhere an email address in one of the templates, it will automatically take this from the global fields and you won't have to do anything for that to happen. So in my case, I only have an Instagram account. So that's the only one I will be adding. Hmm. And then I will also set up podcast links because um, this is the podcasting website. So for me, having those links all centrally in one place will be much easier than having to add these URLs several times. So I will add a new field group and I will call this podcast. And then from here, I will add links. So our first one... Um, so the first one would be Stitcher. And then our link URL. Right. Now I can add links here, hopefully. Okay, I need to add it through here. So in our podcast, another link, um, so iTunes, so I'll repeat this for the different uh, services, so Google Play. So there was um, um, an extra space after the URL, apparently. So that's why it was first not valid. And Spotify is the last one. All right, so now I added these different fields to the global fields and I will be able to use these on the website. The next step, what I will be doing is adding some pages on the, oh wait, I still have to add one other thing in our dashboard and that is our analytics code. Um, so the the Google Analytics code should go in uh, our head, so we can add a new one here and then add the script. So this automatically um, will see that it's Google Analytics and I want it to be inserted in both my themes and landing pages because I want all the pages on my website to track. 
All right. So at this point, I have the uh, structure of the website. I have a homepage that I can start customizing. Um, I added the API connection for an email uh, marketing subscription or an email marketing service, rather. Uh, I added Google Analytics. I added uh, the smart site so that I can easily use those links. So now it's time to create uh, some pages, some blog posts, and then we will be able to um, change the design of the defaults that we have on the website. Now, I will try to check in with you guys again. All right, I see people are asking about loading time. Um, so the we have, and you might have seen that, in um, to do them. Uh, in the team builder uh, dashboard, you can see that there is something that is called uh, site speed. So what we did is um, we integrate with a caching plugin and we integrate with an email optimization service because those are the two things that will make together with your hosting uh, the biggest difference on uh, the speed of your website. So the thing is, one, when you're building your website, you should absolutely not activate this. Um, so please don't activate your caching while you're working on your website and your image optimization. You don't have to do that yet. Uh, and to be fair, I didn't create the accounts right now, so I probably won't be doing it here in the tutorial, but we have a video that explains exactly how to do that. And you can do it once uh, your website is completely set up. The last thing you want to do is add the caching, add the image optimization. Now, the reason that you don't want to do that while you're building the website is because uh, activating caching means that there is a version of your website that is kept in memory and then um, it's served from memory to uh, your, your visitors. So if you do that while you're constantly making changes on your website, it will, it will result in you seeing something in the Thrive Themes editor and then not seeing it on your live website and you, you won't understand what's, what's going on and you will feel like the tool is broken, which is not true. It's just that um, you, you see a version that had been saved before and in order to, um, to review that version, you would need to empty caching and, and uh, empty your browser caching and so on. So that is why um, I don't suggest that doing while you're building the website but once you do have your website and you're happy with it, then make sure to activate the caching, activate the image optimization, which we use Optimal for, um, and then you will see that this will really help the site speed. All right, so let's go to our pages. So we can see that in the wizard, automatically uh, a page was created that's called blog. So this is the page that shows our blog posts. Um, this contact us page must be something that was already on the website and this one also. So these two are two pages that I do not want. Um, so move to trash. Uh, and then we have the generated homepage, which is our front page. Now, one thing that we do want to do is change this to uh, not say generated homepage. It's not really nice as the title. Um, so when we edit this, We can just call this home, for example. All right, let's update this. All right, so we have our blog page and our home page. Now, this is a fairly simple website. So the pages that I want to have is a contact page. So contact. Um, and I'm just immediately going to publish it because it will be finished by the end of this tutorial anyway. Uh, you could put it um, in, in draft if you didn't want to publish it yet, but it's easier because then I can um, much easier link to it because then it gets found in the, um, in the search. So contact and then about. All right. And I will also make a confirmation page because um, I will need this confirmation page to set up my email uh, marketing service. So let's 
publish this to. Now, as you can see, I have not changed anything on the content of this um, of these pages yet. We will get back to that um, once we did our homepage because that's the most important one right now. And in order to make it easier to see what's going on in uh, the blog post, I will also uh, create some blog posts, so not this one. So these are blog posts that get added automatically if uh, like this website is on site ground, so they added this blog post automatically. So I can just uh, delete it. Uh, but so first title of the first blog post, I already have this one here. Mm -hmm. Our title, this is the first episode of the podcast. And because this will be a, a, a podcasting website, I will actually only use the audio format. Now, the difference that with this is that um, I can add here a URL for, uh, the, um, for the audio. So don't get to mixed up with that if you don't have if you have a normal blog post all the rest of what i explain will basically be the same except that you will make sure that you edit the default blog post rather than the default audio blog post template so let's uh, also add our featured image here um this one let's see can i download this Yes. So this is my featured image. And the reason that I'm already preparing this is because now when I will be making the template, I can actually see in the template immediately um, how, how the real blog post will look. So featured image, title, and then we added the audio file um, and made it here at the an audio and then I will also already add a category so this one is in the career category so add a new category all right um, I can publish this blog post now for the content of the blog post um, I'm used to using Thrive Architect so you could start typing here uh, but you won't be able to do all the things that I will show you so um, yeah it's it's you could use Gutenberg it's not um, it, it's not gonna interfere with with your website or anything um, but once you start using tribe architect I'm pretty sure that you won't want to use the block editor anymore so that is why the only thing I did was add the title um, and now I'm actually gonna add the content through uh, through um, Drive Architect. Now, as you can see, this is the way it looks right now. So the featured image is this full width image, and then we have the title here, uh, the featured audio, and then the category is shown here, and we have a sidebar. Now, all of these are things that I actually am going to change, um, but first I want to add some content so that we see what we're doing. So... When I take content from a Google Doc or somewhere else, honestly, I I just usually write this immediately in Thrive Architect. But if you are uh, used to uh, typing in, in Google Docs or something like that, the best way to then uh, transfer it to Architect and the, the way to make it as easy as possible is to use uh, Control Shift uh, V. So that will actually take away any formatting from uh, the, the Google Doc so that then you can add your formatting really easily and it won't mess up anything. So that's the way I found is easiest to um, So yeah, that's the way it's, it's easiest in my opinion to copy from a, a, a doc to, um, to architect. 
Now, this is the introduction for the podcast. I'll also add an add uh, a more tag, so a read more tag. Uh, this will allow to have the uh, the excerpt. So in in the list, this will make the excerpt. And I actually want this here. Let me see. So. So this is the introduction, then we have the uh, the read more tag, and then you will love this episode if, so this is giving people a reason to listen to the episode. And then I will use a toggle element uh, because I want to add the transcription uh, of the episode in here. So um, I only need one toggle and I want this to only be one column. And then let's edit this. So this, I will call it automatic transcription, just to make sure that people know that this is, um, yeah, that this is done by a machine so that it might not be 100% perfect. So I have the transcription here, which by the way is, um, I use this, this service, which is called otter.ii, AI, <laughs> um, and it, it does a really, really good job at transcribing. Um, so again, let's use our shift control V. So this now put the whole transcription of the episode within this toggle element. And then I can collapse it done. So as you can see, um, what I did to add, uh, to use the toggle element is I used this edit toggle items. So for any item in theme builder or an architect that is a little bit more complex, you can have this edit um, menu here. So for a lead generation form, for example, you will have it or for a contact form or so on, because it allows you to then go into edit mode for only that element and to have here um, the, the, the options for only that element. Now, after that, I still have some because I want people to leave a comment. So I'm going to ask them to leave a comment there. And this one, let's discuss, we'll make that a heading two. All right, perfect. So now this is the content of uh, the blog post and I will be able to change the design. All right, how are we doing on comments? Um, the more tag will not show like that is only uh, the, the more tag is only shown in the editor on the uh, on the normal preview. Let me quickly preview this for you. Uh, you will not see a more tag like it's it's not there. So that is just in the, in the editing mode. This this more thing you won't see it on the back end uh, on the front end. Sorry of your website. Uh, the transcription tool. So this is author.ai. All right. Um, Okay, so for uh, I see that there is a discussion about the text element and the text element inside of content boxes, I think. Uh, you absolutely do not need to put a text element in a content box. Um, that is only uh, if you want to have more like complex layouts, but for, um, for a blog, uh, for a blog layout or a normal page, you would not put your text inside a content element. This this will look good on um, on on mobile, as you can see. Like this is the uh, the tablet view. This is the mobile view. So it, as you can see, the toggle element looks good. Uh, the the text element look, looks good because we set up uh, the the fonts in the right way and because the, the template is built in the right way, you absolutely do not need to use um, a content box. 
just to be very clear about that. This is something that a lot of people are still doing because at the time with uh, Content Builder, uh, that was something that, that you had to add a lot of boxes around everything. With Thrive Architect, with Theme Builder, you do not have to do that. All right, so now the, we can get to the fun stuff. So first, let's go to our homepage, shall we? Now, there are different ways to go to your homepage and there are different ways to edit your homepage. And I'll quickly show some of the different ways. Um, so did I not save this? Okay, let's just make sure I saved the work. <laughs> Rather say, hit one too, too many times saved than not enough. So here, this is our current homepage. So as you can see in the bar here, you, it says edit with Thrive Architect. So this means that you can edit the content. Anytime that you see edit with Architect, it means you're editing the content of a page. And anytime that you see edit Thrive Theme Builder or edit with Theme Builder, it means that you're editing um, the, the template that is around the content. Uh, now, because your homepage is a special standalone page on your website, it's actually a landing page that just takes your header and your footer from the theme, you can edit it with Architect. So this is one way. Just go to your homepage and then hit this Edit with Drive Architect button. Another way, I can close this one too. Another way is go to your pages and then here uh, go to your homepage and from here Edit with Drive Architect. Now this one, you will always have to edit with Drive Architect, by the way. <laughs> and then um, the last possible way to get to your homepage is in the templates, which is something that you will get more familiar with later. I'm just gonna close some of these tabs that we don't need anymore. You can see here that in your templates, you have your active homepage and you can edit this landing page. All three of these different things will get you to the exact same point to edit uh, your homepage. So yeah, let's hit this button then. So now we are inside of uh, the Thrive Editor and Thrive Architect and we can edit this whole page. Now, if you're not familiar yet with the Thrive Teams tools, you will see that everything is front-end editable. Um, nothing of this is um, Photoshop or uh, can't be edited or so on. Everything is um, from front-end editable. Maybe let's start with this header, shall we? Um, now, in this case, I'm editing the header for the complete website, not just for the home page. Um, so what I'll do is click on this header and then click on edit header. From there, I can just start editing. So like I already said, I don't particularly like this border, which is around the columns. Now the, um, the best way to know what you're editing or, or to click on the right element is always to use these breadcrumbs. So uh, you'll see when you click on something like this logo, it's in a column, it's in a columns element. And then you can see this uh, goes around the all of it, so the borders, I don't want to border around this. And I'm also not particularly fan of having this uh, white box on the logo. So in this case, I think the column it has a background color. Um, so in the background style, I'll put this to transparent, which takes away the color. And then this logo, I'll switch to the light logo. So that is why I uploaded the dark and the light logo before in the branding, because now that makes it super easy uh, to, to switch to the, the other logo. I also want this logo to actually be outlined on the side. And I do not want this adding. So that's just particularity for me, I like my logo to be completely to the side. Uh, then for our menu. So because I decided to use a custom menu for um, the, the website rather than a WordPress menu, I can just edit the menu elements right here. That That's one of the reasons why I like it so much. So make sure to select the custom menu and then here in menu items, um, 
I will only have a couple of them. So I will have podcasts. So this will go to uh, my blog page, actually. Um, so to the, the blog list, then I will also have contact. And I can search here for contact. So that's the reason why I created these pages and I already published them because then I can just very quickly use the search function. I don't have to copy paste URLs. I'm sure that I won't make a mistake there. Um, contact and you can see here like the, up the updates immediately, right? So that's just cool. Let's also put a capital letter on contact. And about. And the other menu items, for the moment, I don't need them. I might at some point add a call to action uh, to this menu, but for the moment, I don't really have one yet. So that's it. Let's be done with this. So again, um, as you noticed, I had like this salmon color around the header, which meant that I'm in editing mode for only the header. Um, and now we can go on to use the home page. The way that this works is really, really cool because first of all, um, as you can see, this is really nicely pre-designed, uh, already uses the colors, but we also know that you probably want to change some stuff on the home page. I know I want to do that when uh, I, I work on my own website. There's always something that we kind of want to change. And that is why you can see that there is this plus uh, button that says blocks. Now, when you click, uh, on this plus blocks button. You can see that you have page blocks and content blocks. And uh, in this case, what we want is the page blocks. So this will allow you to very, very easily add pre-designed elements to your homepage. And that is what I will be using now to create uh, the, the full website the way I want it to. So first of all, I don't have logos, so I'll just delete these logos. And I also still have this notification. And you might have noticed that I collapsed this panel and expanded. Now, the reason I do that is just because um, it makes it very, very easy to see exactly how this will look on the real screen without having to go to preview. Um, so yeah, you can uh, use use this to expand or, or collapse uh, what you want. So let's get started. Uh, I did prepare the copy for this. Um, if you want help with this, we do have a bunch of tutorials on how to write good copy and so on. Um, I think we might even have a Thrive University course for that. Uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you tell people why they are on your website, whom this website is for, and um, you make sure that, yeah, that the right people would, would keep reading. Um, so let's upload. Now, I don't want this opt-in form here, so I'm just going to delete that. And then there's a little bit too much space, in my opinion. Um, so, then. Now, again, one of the things that um, I always suggest you do is when you click on something, look in the breadcrumbs to see what you are editing and where that element is on the page. So this is a text, which is a heading one, which is exactly what we want for the first most important title on our website. And then it's in a column, inside a columns element, uh, inside a background section. So if I want more space underneath this picture, for example, what I will do is go to the background section. And then from there, I'm adding spacing to this background section. And actually, I'm going to add 60 because then it evens out with the top of this element and the bottom of this element. 
Now, the next thing that I want on this website is actually some more text. So for this, I do like this four column layout, but it's not yet what I want to have on uh, my homepage. I first want to communicate a bit clearer about the goal of the podcast and the goal of this website. So I'll use a block for that. And as you can see here, we have text and content blocks, um, which make it just makes it super easy uh, to, to already have these pre-designed uh, blocks available for you. Now, you don't have to use one of these. Uh, you can simply use elements from the sidebar and start dropping text on there. But there are some huge advantages, mainly that um, our designers know much better what they are doing than, um, than I do. So that's why I trust that they know the right spacing and um, the, that it's already optimized for mobile and so on. So I don't have to worry about that. And also, um, as you can see, these blocks immediately use the color of your website. So it's just such an easy way to build a really nice looking website. And then you can still change. Like for example, I'm not a super big fan of this background color. So I can select this block, go into the, um, the background style and um, actually like unlink this and make it completely transparent. Now, the reason that I unlinked this is because um, it was linked to one of the website colors. And in order to be able to change it for just this element, I can just unlink this block from my website colors. And then um, that makes it, yeah, that makes that I can change anything I want. I can give it any color I want. So let me copy paste some more. And then after this block, oh, so this is what happens when you don't use the uh, control uh, shift V. So let me go back. I use control Z to go back and now I'll paste it with the control shift V so that it doesn't take uh, the, uh, the formatting from the Google doc, but it takes the formatting from my element. And all right. And let's save this. Okay, so now we went from uh, this to this, where I have my logo. Uh, the links are already there. I have my USP and uh, the picture, the first part, and I'll continue to work on this homepage. Now, let me quickly check how you guys are doing with the questions. All right. Um, seems like Colin is pretty much on top of uh, answering to your questions. Um, so I'll just continue building my homepage <laughs> and I hope that that is uh, useful for you guys to see. So where were we? Okay. The next block, I actually do want to use this really nice block and I'll show you, um, some, some really cool stuff with, with the logos. Um, now this, I actually want this to be, um, Heading two. So as you can see, because I set up the fonts on the theme level, now I can just very easily uh, add these to my, my landing page, to the home page, and it will automatically take the, take the fonts that I set up. Um, it, it just makes it super easy to make sure to stay uh, consistent with that. I almost feel like putting on some, some music. <laughs>
All right, so what I wanted to show you here is uh, these icons. So like I said, everything in Thrive Team Builder, we, we, we make sure that you can change them yourself. It's something that I've been so frustrated with looking at other themes and at other landing page builders and so on is that um, they add an icon here, but it's not actually an icon. It's actually like an, an image and it fits perfectly with the landing page. But then the moment that you add your own colors, you don't have this available anymore. So it's for us at Thrive Themes, it's just super important that everything that you see on the page can be edited and um, can you can do it without using Photoshop and so on. So for example, these are icons. When you click on it, you can see that in the main options here, you can change uh, the, the icon. And I'm a very big fan of our duotone icons. I just think they look really, really nice. And I already went through them and I found this business icon, which fits my purpose. So I can add it. And as you can see now, it became like this duotone icon and it uses uh, the color of my website, which is just really cool. And if you want to change the style, you can change it. Yeah, change the style. You can just very easily um, add, like make it a round icon and so on. So we made it as easy as possible for you guys to have a website that really looks good um, without ever needing any uh, image editing tool. Let's change this one. So again, I'm going to go to Duotone. And then... Now, if you're, um, if you're a bit frustrated that you can't find the icons as quickly as I can now, uh, don't worry, I did not know the names of these icons by heart. <laughs> I uh, definitely just scrolled through them and I looked at something that I thought was useful because, for example, for this one, I wanted a heart. And in case this wasn't logical, if you type heart, you won't find anything. But if you type favorite, you actually find a heart icon. So sometimes, and this is not our choice, this is actually how these icons um, are uh, are labeled, so we can't do, do much about it. Um, but yeah, just take a little time, go through the different icons, scroll through them, and then I'm sure like there are thousands of them, so you will be able to find whatever you feel fits your purpose. And... All right. Okay, so this is this cool looking uh, four column layout. Now at the moment, because this is a new website, I'm not gonna link these columns to anything. So they aren't like buttons or, or something, but at some point in the future, when I have more pub podcasts published, then I'll probably link each one of these to a category um, of the podcast. So that's, that's my thinking right now, but I'm not gonna do that yet. Then I do like uh, the idea of showing the latest podcast episodes, but I don't like this layout all that much. So I'm going to go back into the blocks, um, choose our list. No, sorry. Our articles. Doo -doo -doo. Here, articles. Because if you go to articles, it means that it will pull the, the blog articles from your website. So that's why uh, this blog is called articles. And uh, the one that I like is, again, this one with the simple uh, list rather than having the featured images for the same reason, as I said, for the, for the blog list, because I won't, have, uh, I won't have nice looking featured images anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's better to have a list for this. Um, so we want to say discover our latest podcast episode. And 
in this you can see or maybe you can't see but when you click on this image um, and it actually selects the column this means that this image is used as the background image in a column element rather than using a separate image element now this can be very helpful because it will stretch the image uh, to the size of the column now in the case of what I'm trying to do here, I actually want to show uh, the artwork of my podcast. So I don't want it to be uh, dependent on, on how big the column is. So what I'll do is I'll uh, simply delete the background style for this column. As you can see, it actually is an image and then um, it has a little overlay. So again, this is something that, that you can do in Theme Builder, right? You can have like this normal image and then you can add like a bluish overlay so that it fits your website. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to do that right now, uh, but I am going to add a new image in there. So I'm simply using the elements now rather than the blocks to add this image and um, I'll need to upload the file. And this is this one, Ooh, 3000. Okay. This is a really big image. Um, I. I'm going to make sure to not load the full image because as you can see, this image is actually 2,560 pixels. So that's more than, than a full screen uh, with size. So that's definitely not what I need right here. Um, so you can see that in the size, I can actually decide to show uh, a smaller version. So probably in this case, I would pick uh, the 300 by 300 and then this shows up, which looks much better for, for what I'm going for here. Um, now, the one thing that you need to understand is that now that you're loading a 300 pixel image, uh, if you blow it up to 500, it will get blurry. So don't do that. <laughs> uh, like here, you can see that now the 300 is 100%. If I wanted to have this image bigger, if I wanted to do, for example, a 500 pixel image, I would have to go uh, to the 1000 pixel and then make it smaller. Um, so in layout and positioning, no, I'm actually going to change this column size a bit. Now, like I said, this is a post list element. What does this mean? This means that each time that I will publish a new article on this website, so in this case, a new podcast episode on this website, um, it will automatically uh, update this on the home page. So that's really cool because I can very easily have the latest episodes on the podcast uh, on the home page and I don't have to worry about it anymore. Now, if you say that, for example, um, at some point, maybe I don't want my latest episodes to show here anymore. Maybe I want my best episodes to show on my home page. That makes sense, right? Then I can use this post list and I can actually filter the posts. So I can say I want to filter the posts and, for example, uh, use uh, categories or um, I can, yeah, I can have a category that I call best, for example, and then I could show only uh, posts from in that category. So this, this is a way to uh, very easily make sure that on your homepage you have your best content. Um, and you can have more than one of these lists, so that also makes for very dynamic content. Now here, as you can see, at the moment, the way this list is filtered is on the date published, uh, descending, so it will go from uh, the <laughs> from the latest to, to from the newest published to the oldest one, and it will show three uh, articles. If you want more, you can you can have more. Um, but yeah, this is how you can uh, filter the list. And then again, because this is a fairly complex uh, element, you have an edit design button. So let's go into this edit design. And one of the things that I want to do is actually make this title a bit bigger, um, probably like maybe like 24. And the post content, I want to use the excerpt. Um, and do not necessarily want these little dots and here too I'll probably yeah I think 16 is like kind of the minimum um, I also want this bolt all right 
now each time that I publish a, a new podcast that I publish a new article on this website it will add here but only up till three posts um, so yeah this is this is a very easy way to keep um, your your homepage up to date all right how are we doing on questions Oh, I just see something. Raphael is saying, I'm really liking the quiz plugin, but you can't change it. So we actually, oh, and I see that Balaz is, is answering. Thank you, Balaz, for that. Um, so yeah, we just uh, released question editing. So if you use the minimalist template, and I actually like, I, I hope I will be able to, to show it here. Um, but if you use the minimalist template, then uh, you, you will be able to um, show the, the the, the change the questions you can now like add the colors all right i'm seeing that it's um it's all we're already uh yeah going we're already at a quarter past six Whew. okay i'm gonna speed this up a little <laughs> all right so um i don't need this blog anymore uh, because i already have a discover the communication skills blog i don't need this about me i actually want a different about me uh, element so i'm gonna change this and in the about section the one i like is this one uh, so i'll use this one delete this one uh, upload so about the host and then here change our text again all right as you can see again when i click on the image this is a column so in our background style now in this case i actually like the fact that it is a background image i have a different image here let's insert this and now you can see that you can actually like drag this along so that's that's just really, really nice um, to use Drive Theme Builder for that. Um, again, no need for Photoshop. How cool is that? And let's edit some text here. All right, I don't have testimonial, so we're going to delete that. And now for the last element. So this is. Um, this is something that I really want to show you because it's one of uh, the particularities of Thrive Theme Builder. Let me just save my work so that I don't lose it. Um, it is that you have um, everything marketing related that is already included in the tools. So Thrive Themes is made to make, to make you build a business website. So we might not have all the design bells and whistles, even though we are pretty close. But we have the tools that you need to build an audience and to convert those people into customers. So that is why even in Theme Builder, you will already find things like the lead generation element. And this lead generation element, you can connect it with, I don't know how many API connections we have now, but with, with like dozens of tools. Um, so you don't need to use a workaround. You don't need to use another plugin. You can just do it from within the team builder, from within Architect. And I'm going to show you now how freaking easy it is uh, to do that. So first of all, I actually created a PDF <laughs> um, for my subscribers. So download my well-balanced success tracking template. So this is a PDF that I will give people when they sign up to the list and all right so here i'm telling them that if they subscribe to the newsletter they can immediately download this uh, this thing so remember how i connected the api connection to active campaign well this is where now i can super easily use that so when i click on this element you can see it's a lead generation element um, and in the main option, so first, I'm actually going to put this to 100%. You'll see why in a second. Um, 
if I go to the main options, so this is where always, when you look at an element, always click on the main options first. You can see the edit form elements. So that is what we will do in just a second to edit things like the, the title on, on uh, the title, the copy on this button. Um, but the most important thing is that here I can very easily add a connection. So in this case, I'll choose from my connections and I have active campaigns set up through API. So now I can simply select it here, choose which list, um, add a tag if I want to have uh, tags on different opt-in forms. So in this case, I could, for example, say tracking uh, template because people actually signed up for the tracking template. And this would add that tag to people who subscribe. Um, or I could send them to a specific list or I, I can do so much with this. Um, but I can also, I do want to ask for a first name. So this is something um, I like to be able to use a, a first name in the emails. Now, um, you might not want that, you might not need that, um, but I think it's, it's just nice to be able to say, hi, Hannah, how are you doing? So your first name we'll put as the placeholder. I'll make it a required field and let's apply. So now, as you can see, this um, email, I'll also put your email just to be consistent. Um, um, so now, as you can see, the, this field got added underneath it, and that's probably not what you want. So that is where our edit form elements comes in. So let's go in here, take this, simply drag it, and now I'll drop it next to this. That's it. That's how easy I change this lead generation element. And here I'll change the title to download. Download now. Okay, first your email. Maybe the first name we can do it a little smaller. Um, I, I could tweak this, but honestly, it's not necessary. Uh, one thing that I do want to show here is what do we want to happen after someone signs up? Because that's the huge advantage of using an API connection is that you can now decide from your website what's happening. So in this case, we want to redirect to a custom URL. That's correct. And I want to call this confirmation. So um, to the confirmation page that I set up before, remember? And I'm also going to send the form values to the thank you page. Now, what this means is that um, the first name and the email information will get sent to the confirmation page. And you can see here, um, it will look something like this. So um, question mark name equals value and email equals value. So, and this one will be important, the, the name one, okay? I'll show you some cool thing with that after. But that's it. This is now functioning. We have a full homepage. Let's, let's see. So this homepage is now 100% functional. I have the, the podcast episode here, um, an opt-in form that's working right here. People will get sent to the active campaign list. So yeah, that's already pretty cool. How are we doing, guys? How are you feeling? Um, is this like drinking from the from the water hose? Water hose? Drinking from the hose? Yeah, something like that. Or how are you guys doing? Yeah, um, th these are not, um, I, I see there is a discussion about the, the templates I prepared or, or something. I'm literally just using Google Docs. Um, it's, it's just me typing in Google Docs. And to be honest, I would, uh, <laughs> I, I actually would just type on the page if you guys were not watching all my typing errors. <laughs> so that is why I actually started, um, yeah, that, that I actually started doing doing this in a Google Doc. 
All right. Yeah. If anybody wants to follow along live, uh, wellbalancedsuccess.com. Um, that's that's where you can see what's actually going on. This is this is happening live. This is this is really happening, guys. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so we have the homepage. Uh, what shall we do first? Uh, let's let's edit our uh, blog post template, shall we? Um, because that is very uh, theme builder specific, and I know it's something that people get a little bit uh, messed up with. So, as I showed you at the moment, it looks like this. It does not look very good. I mean, it's not too bad, but uh, because of the way that the featured image is, is has a text on it, uh, it doesn't look good as as the background. So the way that I can change this template, there are several ways again to do the same thing. So first of all, I can click here and then say edit the theme template, uh, which means that I would be editing the template, not the content of the template, not the content of this blog post. Very, very important. When I edit with Thrive Architect, I would be editing the content, which means everything like the text on this blog post. When I'm editing um, with Thrive Theme Builder, so when it says edit theme template, it means that I would edit all the way that every one of the blog posts would be, would be shown. So this is a way to do that through the front end of the website, or I can go into my templates, and then you can see that here, there are different templates for the default post, default video post, default audio post. Now, like I said, because this is a podcasting website, I will be editing the default audio post because that's the one I'm using for the different audio posts. But you will be able to do exactly the same thing starting from the default post, okay? The only thing that will be different is you won't be adding an audio element in there. Um, but that's that's the only difference. So don't uh, don't get mixed up. Don't make it more complicated than it is. Just use the default uh, one, edit the default one. So let's do that now. The default audio post, edit this one. Now for this, um, what do they say? Uh, smart artists steal? No, that's... <laughs> um, the, the, I, I use inspiration. Uh, and one of the people that is really big in podcasting is uh, Pat Flynn, the Smart Passive Income Podcast. And so I think, like, I looked at a lot of different podcasting websites, and I just really liked the way that um, his his podcast was presented. Now, I'm not going to copy everything uh, completely, but I'm going to use this as inspiration, because why not? We know that this works. So what I'm going to do is... Um, in this top section, so let's see, here uh, Pat Flynn has like this, this two column layout. Uh, on the one hand is the title um, and then the hosted by, and then on the other hand is the featured image. So I really like this layout. And I'm going to do this on this, um, in the top section. Now, as you can see here, <coughs> sorry about that, I'm quickly going to have a sip. Now, as you can see here, the top section is independent from uh, your, your sidebar. So that is why if you want anything that goes full width on, on your page, you would use your top section. Um, then you have your content section where you, you can have your sidebar. And then we again have a bottom section. I think this, uh, yeah, this, this layout here shows it really, really nicely. Now, a couple of things you can very easily hide and show certain elements and that is exactly what we will do with the sidebar because i do not want to have a sidebar on blog posts so that's it sidebar no sidebar sidebar no sidebar <laughs> sorry this is fun um so yeah i'm gonna hide this sidebar and make this this content uh full full width but first of all let's work on this top section now again um I'm lazy, and if somebody already did the work for me, I'm not going to do the work again. So clicking on the top section, I can choose replace. This will give me a whole library of templates that our designers already made and that I can just try to find something that is similar or 
maybe like there's one that you really, really like. Now, in my case, because I have this very specific thing in mind that I want, um, I will go with something that is similar. So when I think about this, um, I think about, I want this two column layout and um, yeah, the title, the author, um, some, some of those elements. And looking at that, I think that this one is probably the most similar because as you can see, these are full with images. I do not want that. Here we have like this fancy divider that I don't really need at the moment. Um, so yeah, in our case, I will take this one. Now, even if it doesn't have an audio element, we'll, we'll fix that in a second. So I'll go for the featured image three. All right. <coughs> Now, because I already published a blog post, um, I will be able to see exactly what happens on this blog post. Now, if you have multiple blog posts, you can um, select here in the in the content dropdown, and that will actually show you different uh, different blog posts on your website. Or you can use demo content. Now, um, the demo content is good if you if you start from scratch, you have nothing uh, published yet. There's, that will just give you some lorem ipsum, uh, so that can be good. But um, yeah, usually you, you'll want to look at one of your blog posts. Um, so let's have a look. We have this image, then we have this subscribe now, which I think is, is really cool for a podcast. Um, so let's, let's go with this. Um, we already have our title, so that looks good. Instead of by, I will call this hosted, hosted by. Um, this is a dynamic text, so if I'm the one publishing the blog post, my name will show. If somebody else publishes a blog post, then their name will show. So this is the author author name. Um, and as you can see, this is in a content box. So I will select the full content box, which means that I have this author image, um, and which also is dynamic, and the text. And I'll drag this above the title. And this is the category, which I think, um, yeah, I'll leave it. I'll leave it right there at the moment. Now, um, this column again has this background image, um, which I don't like. I prefer having a normal image in here. Um, so I'll add. I'll just add the image. And. Actually, I can use, okay, <laughs> I could have used the featured image, which would have been smarter and less steps, or I can actually, if I select a normal image, I can go to the dynamic source, and then the source will, here, I can set the featured image. So that's two ways to go about it. Um, I'll make this a bit smaller, actually, so that it looks a bit better probably something like 350 all right and uh, yeah, in the middle now i want the whole background to have a background color so in this case i'll select it so in, i select the top sections the full section um, and our background style and i will add one of the theme colors here mm, yeah now, this means that if one day I decide to change this theme color, then this will, um, so if I change from blue to orange, then because this is linked to my theme colors, this will actually change too. Now, I don't know how good you can see it on the screen here, but this column actually has a background color, um, which I don't want. So I'll just put it on completely transparent. And now, um, yeah, that already looks pretty good good, pretty close to what I wanted. We still have these share buttons. Um, so let's add some text. And page share. All right. And then um, I want social icons. So social share. I'll drop these underneath here and make this icons only. And now I know that a lot of you are waiting for a new social share element and it is coming we're so close it should be in the next release um, which means that you will have way more options for um, different networks and and 
changing the styles and so on. But now, for, for now, I'll just use the default style. So what I want to do is I want to have these, uh, these buttons next to the shared, te shared text. And I could use column elements, but column elements always um, act a certain way on, on mobile. So if you have two elements that you really want to keep next to each other, it's actually better to use some of the advanced layout settings. And in this case, it means adding this as inline and then also making this element inline. So, all right. And now, come on. Inline. Let's see. With both elements in line, they should jump next to each other. Hmm. Okay. There seems to be a little glitch here, unfortunately. So I can't show you. Hmm. I did it before. So both elements. Uh, no, I'm annoyed by this. <laughs> Both elements have to be set to inline and then they should jump. But okay, for now, I'll, I'll make sure to fix it later. Um, so yeah, we'll have, we have our share buttons. Um, now, one thing that's still missing in here is our audio element because we have this audio post. And so we want to make sure that for every uh, different audio post, it actually uh, pulls out the right MP3 file, right? So uh, the way to do this is by adding our audio element in here. Let's drop this under our title and make sure to make this the dynamic audio element because then it will pull it from our blog post. And now because I'm using the, the default audio elements, so we will be able to see how this changed now. All right. So because we're using the default audio element here, I have to, I will add a content box um, around it with a background style. So let's make this a white content box actually and make sure that it's not transparent. If not, we won't see it. All right, and add a little drop shadow around it so that it stands out. And now I want to have our audio element in here. All right, there it is. Let's make sure. Okay, so this is now how our um, how our blog post looks like, how our audio blog post will look like. So we have this hosted by, then we have the title, we have our audio elements, and then we have our share. Um, now here I still have share icons. I will delete those, but we don't have a sidebar anymore. And then we have Thrive Commons uh, that are here. And as you can see, we still have like these tags and, and um, posts that I don't particularly like, so we're going to change that right now. But this top section already looks pretty much like what I was going for. Um, let me just show one of the episodes here because this is actually the, the landing page. So as you can see, we have like the title and then the, um, the podcast. And here we have this. We still need to have these subscribe now buttons. So the way I will do this is by adding a toggle element. Um, because I want to have like that effect of um, the, the drop down with then the different uh, the different elements. So in our in our toggle element, uh, we only want one and then only one button, and we can edit this. Oop, make sure the toggle is selected, edit it, say subscribe. 
um, instead of this icon, we will have like this drop down. All right, and then make it a little smaller. So in our layout, um, sorry. <laughs> our toggle element and then once we have the uh, we're out of edit mode we can go into our layout and positioning and we can make the width of um, the the toggle we can make a fixed width let's say 200 make like this subscribe button and I want this to overlay with the image so I'm using the um, the top margin on the toggle element to overlay it with this featured image. And because I know that the featured image is always going to be 350 and um, that it is this square image, I can actually make this cool looking layout. And then because I like normal numbers, <laughs> let's make this 45. That, that's just me. Um, and now we can edit this again, expand and in here, what we want to do is we want to put our links to our different uh, platforms. So in this case, we would have iTunes, uh, Stitcher, uh, what was it again, Spotify, and Google Play. And what we can do, and that is why I added them to the smart list, is in the dynamic, dynamic links, I can go into our global fields. And then from here, I can select the podcast. And now I can just say, okay, iTunes, insert, do the same for Stitcher, for Spotify, and lastly for Google Play. Global Fields, Podcasts, Google Play. All right. Done. Okay, let's save this. So this now means that um, if I have to change the URL of one of these uh, podcast platforms, I can very easily do that in the Global Fields, in the back end of WordPress, rather than having to go into these templates or even like into all the content of my blog posts or whatever, because these are, um, uh, are, are in this central place. So that's really, really cool. So now we have our button here and these are now linked. How cool is that? Okay, so I think I'm getting pretty close to, uh, to what I wanted to accomplish here. Now, one thing that I still wanna do is uh, in our uh, top section, I actually want to use a fancy divider. So in decorations on the bottom of this, I can use a fancy divider. And then uh, the one that I wanted is like this one. All right. And I'm going to add a little bit of extra um, a little bit of extra margin underneath here, uh, padding, sorry, that it goes underneath these buttons. All right. How cool is that? Okay, so we went from this uh, full featured image uh, with the title on top of it, with the audio element underneath it, to this completely new layout um, with the fancy divider, uh, with the subscribe buttons, the share buttons, um, all of this in just a couple of minutes, right? So I still want to delete this. So this element, again, we can just select. And then in the content area, because there was this um, element, we can, we can take out the, the layout and I do not want to show tags. Uh, so this is not an element that I need. So let me just delete these. 
tags. Oops. Now that's not going to show anymore. Same with this. I'm not going to show any uh, related posts, especially not in the beginning because I don't have I don't I don't have that many posts. Um, so this this if you want related posts in in your template, then of course you can use that. And it's the exact same thing. It's a list element. You can just select related posts. Um, I'm not going to add a divider. And then here we have our comment section. And then for uh, the the bottom section, um, there's I really like what. Uh, pad is doing here with like the selected episodes and then about the show and another um, opt-in form so we can actually do that too so instead of having this bottom section with a contact form um, I can change this up and because I want different elements in this bottom section what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to delete this contact form and this one too and i'm gonna use blocks um, to make this bottom section look the way i want it to and in this case uh, we're gonna use a call to action block which one do i like this one is pretty cool um you can also use our theme blocks actually call to action let me see if there's something that I want. Mm, I just want like a simple banner um, with a button, which I'm sure we have something like that. Because I found it before. <laughs> As you can see, we have a lot of these blocks, so um, you, you'll you'll be able to find the the block that you want here. Um, all right. In the meantime, how are we doing on questions? Are you guys still following with me? <laughs> hmm. Oh, Maybe it was this one that I used. All right, let me quickly check how we're doing on questions here. All right. Okay, people are still uh, following. <laughs> I'm quickly gonna have a sip. Oh, okay. So, um, this is exactly the reason why I said not to use caching, <laughs> because apparently uh, the there's the side ground caching um, is set to on, which is why you guys don't see the exact changes that I'm working on. So um, let me see if I can turn this off for now. All right, let's see if this is any better. So I think I turned off the, the caching so that you guys should be able to see the exact same thing that I'm seeing on the website. Let's see. 
Okay, so for me, this is this is updating. I hope that now for you guys, you, you can see this too. Um, so I saw a question about, can you do this for a video element? Yes, it works exactly the same for, uh, for the video element. Uh, you would go to video and then dynamic, and then make sure you select the dynamic source. Um, and of course, if you have a normal blog post, then you wouldn't have an audio or video element, but you can still use the exact same method uh, for doing all the, the changes I did here. Um, now, I'm actually, I'm going to stop building out uh, this, this template. I think that most of you got the gist of how I did this. And if you come back probably in like two days, <laughs> maybe not tonight, but uh, probably like this is my live website, so I'll, I'll make sure to, to finish it. Um, I'll add this, this bottom section uh, exactly the way I want it to. Um, because I still want to show you guys how to do uh, the, the, the contact page um, and how to do the, the about page. So, <coughs> sorry, yesterday I was losing my voice and I was getting really upset because I don't want to, uh, <laughs> I didn't want to have to postpone this. So uh, the contact page. So what we can do here, because I already created a page, already edited it, uh, we can edit it with Thrive Architect. And now um, you can choose whether you want to use a normal page, which means that it is going to use uh, your theme builder page template, the default page template, or the one you select, whether you just want to keep your header, your footer, and then start building the rest of the page up, whether you want a completely blank page, so this can be really helpful uh, for certain landing pages, or whether you want to use one of the pre-built landing pages with um, that comes with, with Team Builder has a few of them, but most of them are, are part of Thrive Architect. Now, um, let me show you what, what a normal page looks like at the moment. Um, so because I selected the blank page as the default template, as you can see, this actually uh, <laughs> looks like a blank page. Um, you can see here in the page, in the template settings, that the blank page is activated. And um, in the visibility settings, this is actually really helpful. You can show or hide um, certain sections. So even if your default template has a top section, you can still, on a page by page level, decide whether or not you want to use that. Um, so in this case, because this template by default, I can uh, let me let me show that. Because the default page template, the one I selected, it was the blank page, it doesn't actually have the top section activated and the bottom section activated by default. Um, so this is the default page, you can edit it. So as you can see here, the top section is hidden and the bottom section is hidden by default. But on this uh, contact page, I could still decide to actually uh, show a top section, show a bottom section, I can build these sections. Um, so you can you can really still do whatever you want. Now, because um, this is a simple page that I'm building, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to add a block. Now, again, this, this is my, my favorite thing now, blocks. <laughs> And I'm actually going to use one of the theme blocks and uh, in the contacts, the contact block. And the one I'm, I want is like this two column uh, contact form uh, layout. So I made a little bit of uh, content for this. Let's chat. And then some more text. As you can see here, um, the, we have these icons, and then we actually have some text elements here. Um, now, the reason that this is empty is because it pulls from the global fields. And if you remember, 
I didn't actually fill out the phone number and uh, the email and my address because that's not something that I want to show on the website. But if you filled out in your global field this information, it would already show on this page. So if the moment you load that blog, it would show your phone number, it would show your address, it would show your email address. So really, really cool. Now um, I'm going to delete this. And I'm actually going to delete this, these elements too, because I do not need them on my design. That looks a little bit empty, but it's okay. <laughs> now, uh, this form is a contact form that is part of, uh, of the Thrive Teams tool suite. So again, I did not install another plugin for this. I had not, I, did, I didn't do anything crazy like that, right? I took a block inserted it and now I can very easily uh, adjust this to look the way I want um, and, and to do whatever I want it to do. Now um, going into full detail on what this contact form element can do uh, would be a little bit too much. Go to our blog. Uh, we just released a video on how to do an, an high converting contact page and you can see all the details, but you can have things like drop down. Um, so you could ask people like, hey, what are you contacting me about? Uh, and, and have them select that first. You can have GDPR boxes. Uh, and then the cool thing is you can very easily connect this form again with uh, the tools that you're already using. Now, because this is a contact form um, and I'm not going to add the possibility to subscribe to the newsletter from the contact form because I don't think that that is why a contact form is there on your website. So I'm just going to say email and I'm going to send emails from this site. If you know that you will receive a lot of contact forms and it's super important for you, I would suggest uh, connecting an email delivery service. Um, MailChimp has one that's called Mandrill. Um, Postmark is one, uh, I don't know, there's, there's some other ones, um, but that is basically an, an email delivery service. So it means that people will not get uh, added to a list, um, but it will handle emails and it will, it will send emails better than uh, your WordPress server. Because what can happen is that these emails will go to spam um, because like, yeah, that's just how, how Gmail uh, sees emails from, from a website. It often goes to spam. So I would suggest you um, hook this up with an email uh, delivery service. Again, we have more information on that on our knowledge base in case you want to you wanna know that. And then you can uh, change the email here so you can see this will go to me and then I can just have all the forms. Um, it's, it's very, very straightforward. But now this is connected. So this means that if somebody fills out this contact form, it will actually go to my email. Now you can also decide what you want to do after um, somebody uh, had this filled out this contact form. Now in this case, I'm just going to show a success message. Uh, and thank you for contacting me. So this means that if somebody subscribes, they will not, uh, subscribe. Sorry, if somebody sends a message on this contact form, it will not go to another page. Uh, it will not like reload. It will just show a, a success message. So that's easy peasy. All right, contact page done. <coughs> Ooh. How are we doing? Is the brain fuming? Let me see. All right. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for people who were late. Don't worry, you can. Uh, you can watch this again. The, the, the replay should be available. So we have our uh, contact page. And now let's do our about page. So our about page, edit with Thrive Architect. 
we will see the same uh, message. Because the about page, I want to, it to be a bit of a special page. So I'm going to go with the blank page with just the header and the footer. And from there, I can simply start adding blocks. Again, that's by far the easiest way to build this about page. Now, for, um, for the sake of this tutorial, I think by now you've seen me use blocks. You've seen me copy paste text. You've seen me add it, uh, edit the, the image elements. Um, so I'm not going to do that again uh, for the about page. Um, that's, yeah, I don't think that that would add that much to, to the conversation. Uh, so we're, we're, you can just go in here, pick the blocks that you really like. And, um, one thing that I did want to show, uh, is that if you find a blog that you like, um, so for example, I, I really like this blog, but the reason that I like this blog is for this column element. I can actually select these columns and then simply drag them and just like drag them here uh, below below these columns. Oh, sorry. Control Z. I only had this element, so make sure to select the full. All right, all the elements, and then drop them below here. And so now I have uh, this new element with just the the columns. Right, I don't need to keep the rest of this. So that's also something that you can very easily do. If you see something in a blog that you really like, you can just take that element and it's already pre-designed um, and you don't have to um, do it yourself. So that's just really cool. So for the about page, what I would do is I would continue adding blogs. And um, if you have trouble writing your about page, we have a Thrive University course that's called the about page formula. Um, Shane did a full course on how to write your about page, what should be on your about page, um, should there be a contact, uh, an, an call to action on there, yes or no, and so on. So as you can see, very easy to just build it with blocks. All right, so how are we doing on our website now? We have our homepage. We have our, ah, there is definitely some caching going on. That's annoying. Because it looked good. So we have our contact page. We have our about page. We have our home page. We have our featured image page. And uh, the one thing that I'm, I still want to change is the podcast overview page. Um, so I'm just gonna, oh. which in our case is, is the blog list basically. Now um, at the moment there's, there's only one blog post, so it's going to be a bit weird to edit the blog list, but still, I want to show you how to do it. So Thrive Theme Builder. Uh, go to my templates. <laughs> and then we can see here uh, the list templates. And so the default blog is the one that you would use, uh, that you would edit. All right. Um, so here you can see that it says company uh, company in like these, these brackets with the exclamation point. So this shows that there is a global field that is used. So if I would have added my company name, which in this case would be well-balanced success, then it would say well-balanced success uh, blog. But because I didn't fill that, fill that out, uh, that's not what, what it says. Um, now, I'm actually going to use the same copy as on my opt-in form. And we're going to delete that. 
All right, so now this is a normal title and the same copy as I have on the home page. And because this is an other uh, opt-in form, I need to do the exact same thing. So I need to go to add connection, uh, choose the active campaign, um, make sure that the, the right list is selected and so on. <clears throat> I would also add the first name here. Um, but it's important that you make sure that each one of your opt-in forms is actually connected and that we send people to the confirmation page. Let's send the values here too. And now, um, now on this, I also do not want a sidebar and I'm not going to use this bottom section either. So I'm going to hide this bottom section. So now it's just going to be a very clean uh, list of the latest blog posts that will be shown here, which is exactly what I wanted. All right, and then the last page that we still have is our confirmation page. So how are we doing? Are you guys still, um, are you guys still good for, for going on a little bit longer? I would love to show you something with Thrive Quiz Builder, um, but if, uh, if you're bored, then, <laughs> then I can wrap it up right here. All right. Um, all right. Seems like you guys are still uh, going on. So then I'll I'll keep going. And okay, perfect. And again, I'm really sorry for uh, people who were on the on the wrong list. Like. Sincerely sorry um, on the on the wrong link. Uh, we tried to do it the right way. This is also the first time uh, for us. So yeah. Okay, so the confirmation page. Let's go to Thrive Quiz Builder. What I would like to do on the confirmation page is actually ask people uh, an additional question about what they would like to hear on my podcast. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use Thrive Quiz Builder so that once somebody signed up for the email list and they go to the confirmation page, I can ask them that additional question. So let's build this from scratch. Um, And we'll make this a survey question because um, so with Thrive Team Build, uh, Thrive, <laughs> Thrive Team Builder, with Thrive Quiz Builder, you can do really cool things where you can send uh, different like people to different results pages and um, yeah, there's really some cool stuff that you can do there. Uh, but because this is more of like a survey where I'm just going to ask one question and then say, hey, thank you for answering. I'm going to use the survey uh, quiz type. Then as a quiz style, I'm going to use the minimalist quiz style because like I said, we just added this edit design uh, for, for the quiz style. And that's just, I, I just think that's really cool because now I can, we can change the color on uh, the, the quiz questions. So I'll use my brand guide and I have this bright pink that you might have seen from the featured image. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Uh, and so here, this uh, template has like this blue on, on hover. So instead of using this blue, I'm going to use my bright pink. Now we have this uh, cool pink on hover. So that's exactly what I want to. Let's save this. All right. And then um, I do not need a splash page. So a splash page is um, like people first see like, hey, answer this quiz and then start quiz button. Now in this case, because people just gave me their email, 
I actually just want them to see the first question. So I'm going to delete um, the, the splash page. And then in the questions, um, I'm going to ask, add a question. And this is going to be an open ended question. Uh, and the question I want to ask is what's your biggest struggle? What's the one thing you struggle with most when it comes to achieving well-balanced success? And I will let people use a large, uh, a large field. Now this is required because it's the only question that we have. And um, here I can change the, the placeholder. Um, so So here I'm prompting people to start uh, the, the text with I struggle with dot dot dot. So it helps people uh, a little bit um, to yeah to know what's what's going on. You can set a, a max character. Um, yeah. And then let's save this. And so now um, I'm actually only going to ask this one question. Um, so if you want more questions, you can just add a question and, and uh, use this to like drag new questions. Um, but for this purpose, I do not need that. So I'm just going to ask one question. And on the results page, um, So we can just say, um, thank you for filling out. Uh, thank you for sharing your thoughts. And the answer you gave me will help us to understand how we can improve uh, the podcast. So this is what people will see after uh, they they submit the the question. Let's close this. All right. So now we have our one question. We have our result page. Um, yeah, we can just add this to our confirmation page. So pages, all pages, confirmation page. Let's edit this. I'm going to use a normal page for this one. Um, and then here I can add a quiz element. This is our help podcast. All right. And um, of course, I also want to make sure that I give them uh, the, the PDF that they wanted to download. So I'm going to add a button here. And I'm going to give a little bit more explanation above the quiz. Now, what is cool? Remember how I, um, in the very beginning, I said I set up the the lead generation form to send the values to the confirmation page, and this is where I can use these values. So I can actually say something like, "Hey, Hannah." Thank you for uh, subscribing to the newsletter. Your download is right below, but first, uh, would you mind answering uh, this short question for me? And the way that I would do that is in here, I can use the dynamic text and I can request the data from a URL query string and the variable name would be name. Because that was, uh, remember the variable that was shown uh, on the lead generation form. And as the default value, imagine that somebody doesn't fill it out or for some reason um, it, it's not working, then I could say hi there. Uh, so this would be replaced. So if the, the URL has the name, it will say hi, Hannah. Uh, if it doesn't, then it will say hi there. So it will always look good. 
Yeah, and then but first, no, no, no. Now this button, um, the way that you link this up with your PDF is you go to uh, your WordPress, you go into your media library, you say add new. And from here, we're gonna select a file and I have the PDF file here. So you upload the PDF. Then when you click on edit, this will give you a link right here. So we can copy this URL. This is the link that goes directly to the PDF. So on the confirmation page, on this download button, as the target URL, I'm going to paste this uh, PDF. So you can see that it says, well, balance success tracker dot PDF. So this dot PDF shows that it actually will open the PDF. Uh, so this will be download the tracker. All right, so this is now our confirmation page. So if somebody, if somebody comes to this page after they signed up for the email list, it will say, hi, Hannah, thank you for joining the newsletter. Your well-balanced success uh, tracker is right below. Uh, but please, if you have a second, um, would you let me know what's the one thing you struggle with most, blah, blah, blah. And then they can uh, submit this. And then here we have the download uh, the tracker here. I'll probably going to make this a little bit more obvious so that um, maybe like put it into columns or something so that, that I make sure that people do not. Um, yeah, actually, like I'm actually going to put this button above uh, the quiz uh, so that you make sure that people don't feel lost when they arrive on this confirmation page. All right, I think that's it, guys. Um, I showed you how to set up your homepage, how to set up the template for your blog post so that it looks good. And we used the SPI podcast as our, as our inspiration. Um, I showed you how to do a contact page, an about page, how to use page blocks, how to set up your confirmation page, how to connect your, uh, your email forms, uh, how to download a PDF, how to have that question with Thrive Quiz Builder. Um, yeah, I think that's that's not bad for one session. Um, I need to put no follow on the PDF. Okay, I, I can do that if um, if you really want to. <laughs> um, but yeah, how are we doing, guys? Angles, of course. <laughs> yeah, Brian, my brain is tired too. <laughs> uh, if they submit, so no, the moment that somebody submits the answer here, um, so the way Quiz Builder works is it will actually uh, load, let me see, I'm not sure I can do it in, um, if I'm logged in, but I can try. So here I can say, this. And when I submit, you see it says, thank you for sharing your thoughts on this same page. Uh, so they, they are not sent away. Um, it's, it's just all done uh, from the same page. So even if they don't, didn't click the download button uh, before, they will be able to do, uh, to do that after. <laughs> 